Um, so hello everyone, thank you very much for um, joining and uh, my name is Kevin Blanchard, I'm the director of DRR Dynamics which is an organisation um, that looks at uh, including marginalised groups within disaster risk reduction policy and practice um, and I've written this, this uh, chapter along with my colleagues uh, Maureen Fordham, uh, JC Gaylard and Virginia Murray um, who I also work with in my day job at Public Health England. Um, so I'm just going to run through why it's important to include marginalised groups in a national disaster risk assessment and also discuss some of the ways that you might be able to do that and actually be able to include these groups that are traditionally marginalised during the development and policy of, of NDRAs. So I won't read through all of these lines, uh, lines but you can see here that a natural or technological hazard um, can have different impacts on different parts of society um, and that is uh, true um, with uh, various groups uh, across the spectrum and as you can see we have gender, age, physical ability, ethnicity, sexuality as just a handful of those groups who can um, experience a different recovery or a different res response to a disaster um, both natural or technological. So you really need to be able to understand who it is that your community is and why these groups need uh, to be particularly considered when developing uh, a risk assessment. Um, but also, I, I, I don't want to dwell on the fact that these groups are vulnerable or victims. They're not. They have skills and unique opportunities to bring to the table and the discussion. Um, so including these groups within your NDRA will be a beneficial process uh, moving forward. So I talked about uh, a few of those groups. So I've highlighted just two here just to really kind of discuss some of the, some of the aspects of these groups that, that may make them more vulnerable or more at risk of, of um, being impacted by disaster. Um, so there is a, a, a general recognition that women and girls are um, at greater risk due to the impacts of a disaster. And there's been uh, numerous studies and, uh, and data collection and analysis done um, that show that women and girls are many times more likely to be killed or injured um, in a disaster. Um, so ensuring that recognition and actually making sure that recognition is included within an NDRA is important to be able to address those risks right at the very beginning um, and, and, and develop policy and practice that allows for those risks to be looked at. Um, and then again, a uh, similar, similar um, theme with older people. Uh, we have older people statistic statistically much more likely to be injured um, than younger members of the same community. Um, but also you've got to look kind of on the long term. So, so on the long recovery phase, you have very unique uh, issues that, that this particular group needs to uh, be considered for. Um, so complex medical requirements, and obviously if you have a, a hospital or, or you know, other critical infrastructure that has been lost during a disaster, um, then these are the types of people that you really need to be considering when putting together an NDRA. And then the idea of intersectionality comes to the fore. So, you know, you could have a, an older person who happens to be a woman, who happens to be an ethnic minority within her community. And as such, she will encounter multiple, um, multiple difficulties in accessing the same resource and aid and assistance um, as someone who is, um, you know, a, a white male or a, 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 a within the, the majority ethnicity with that particular country. So understanding, understanding that it's not just one particular group um, or one kind of social aspect of that person um, can impact its, its multiple vector, uh, multiple um, uh, kind of causes that, that can have an impact on how quickly someone recovers from, um, from a disaster or from an, a, 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 an event. So how do you build that inclusive NDRA? How is it that you go about starting um, putting together something that actually includes all within society and doesn't just focus on um, the, the main groups or, or those who are kind of most easy to deal with. Um, so I think really it's about understanding that these particular groups need to be included right from the very beginning. So it's really about having that basic formation, um, basic contact, and communication with these groups to ensure that right at the very beginning you are understanding exactly what it is that these groups are facing um, to be able to build this NDRA up. <clears throat> and then it's really about making sure that communication is continued throughout the process. 
And these organizations and these individuals and the people that you've identified as key partners to ensure that this, this process is inclusive, they will bring so much to the table in terms of what it is that they are missing, their communities are missing, how it is that you can work together to make sure that these things are, are, are included um, and benefit wider society. And it's also about fostering that dialogue, making sure that this isn't just a one-way process, making sure it's not you you know, telling them or asking them. It must be a, a two-dimensional two um, discussion. Um, and then there needs to be that continuation, that, that recognition throughout the process that these particular vulnerabilities and these particular groups exist, and they need to be con included throughout the process from beginning right through to the implementation stage. And then just very quickly, because I'm, I'm conscious I'm probably running out of time, um, you need to um, make sure that these, these particular groups um, include representatives of marginalized groups to ensure that aspects are not normally considered by, out, um, by others outside of these groups um, are heard and included. Um, you need to ensure the effective and appropriate communication strategy, as I've said, throughout all uh, sections of society from beginning to end. And then you also need to allow plenty of time for the planning, design and risk reduction policy to be developed within this particular NDRA strategy. And then uh, again, I won't go through this in detail, but um, just going back to the previous presentation, data is incredibly important. You really need to be able to understand who it is that these groups are and data collection um, needs to be disaggregated um, by these various groups. So obviously Sendai framework calls very clearly for data disaggregation, which is fantastic. Um, and data is so important to make sure that planners are able to in include these groups and make sure that the strategy that they're developing is, is, is useful for these groups. And then communication and also monitoring and evaluation, making sure what you're doing isn't actually causing more harm or more, more damage. And then just very quickly, my last slide, uh, if you want further reading on this or if you want to go forward and, and, and kind of delve into this in more detail, I'd recommend um, a, a, an issue brief that came out of the uh, Sendai conference in Japan. Um, we have a toolkit here um, from an actual example of how to build community-based inclusive uh, disaster risk reduction process in Myanmar. Um, you have uh, another really good, uh, very, very thorough um, process on how to include uh, all groups within society uh, within disaster risk reduction. And then lastly, a bit of a plug for an organization that's very close to my heart, uh, the Gender Disaster Network, um, who deal um, specifically with how to include gender and all gender uh, within the disaster risk reduction process. So there's lots of information there for you. Thank you.